Hello beautiful humans, hey it's Jay and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my April plan with me so let's jump right into it. So for my April bullet journal I decided to go with a daisy scrapbookish theme with a color palette of yellow, black, white, and beige. I went with daisies as a theme because daisies are my favorite flower and it's also the flower for April and April is my birthday month so I thought the theme really worked out with the timing of everything. For my title page I ripped up some black construction paper and pasted that into the corner as an accent which will all make sense once this page is completed and I'm doodling some very basic and simple daisy-esque flowers in the bottom corner with my go-to black Muji ballpoint pen as well as a Tomba Fudinosuke hard tip brush pen. I wanted to keep this month very simple yet functional and fun and have like this natural feel to it so you'll notice throughout the video I don't use any rulers and kind of freehand everything which for a perfectionist like me is terrifying more on the perfectionist stuff later but once I finished the daisy doodles on the bottom corner I partially drew the box that was going to be up the page and pasted up to the pasted part of the construction paper so many peeps. From there I took my white gel pens which are the Sakura Jelly Roll and the Uniball Broad Signo pen and continued drawing some bunch of flowers in the top corner and then continued on the box with the white pen. After this I wrote April in all caps in bold with my yellow mild liner and then wrote in cursive on top of that with the white pen on the black construction paper and then the black pen on the white paper. As usual all of my supplies are going to be linked down below in the description box. And then for my finishing touches on the page I added my go-to calendar washi tape some grid washi tape that I had, and then this beautiful daisy washi tape that basically inspired this entire theme. For my dashboard this month, I'm keeping it very simple with a similar setup to my January dashboard with a box for my important dates and then a, another box for my monthly brain dump. To add some color into this page, I did my box in the yellow mind liner and then used the beige marker as a highlight on weekend dates. And this use of beige as a line creator slash highlighter slash divider is going to be very common throughout this month warning now but I really liked how it looks like and it just makes it easier to write on dotted paper at least it does for me and the dashboard is something that I'm really glad that we kind of developed last year yeah it was last year it's just been one of my go-to pages to fill in the blank space that I had at the top of the brain dump box, I wrote a line from one of my favorite poems that reads, My dear, you are a daisy unlike any I have ever seen. I've been reading and writing a lot of poetry lately, so it was nice to add a little homage to that. Usually I have my goals and gratitude spread after, but for this month I'm changing it up a bit. And so the next spreads that I'm working on is a gratitudes list and a 24 before 25 list. The gratitudes list is the same one I do every month of writing one thing I am grateful for a day, every day, but I missed writing in full sentences last month so I'm keeping it very simple this time with just a box. Once again, pulling inspo from that January spread and the 24 before 25 is I guess a birthday? Bucket list. I turned 24 on April 21st and I thought it'd be fun to write down 24 things that I want to do before my 25th birthday. I currently don't have 24 things written down on this list yet, so if you do have any suggestions of things I should do before I turn 25, please leave them in the comments below. 
I thought it would be nice to have my two list type spreads beside each other and wanted to have some nice flow between them. So I wrote both the titles in cursive and did a bold box for the list with the beige marker as a highlighter divider between the lines. To decorate and unify the pages even more, I doodled a bunch of daisies all over both of these pages and can I just say that this was really 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 fun to do. I just kind of got into the zone just like doodling away with my headphones on and was just having fun with them and I didn't really care how they looked like. I am not the greatest drawer or artist in the world so I guess you could say it was kind of cathartic to do something without having to care if it looked perfect and that's why I kind of liked making this theme a little scrapbooky because scrapbooks aren't perfect and the little imperfections are what made it so unique. I didn't care if my pen went over or if it skipped, it just added some character to the page. I recently finished a book called The Perfection Detox by Petra Kolbas and I'm trying to work and do things with a progress mindset rather than a perfectionist mindset now and I highly recommend the book to any recovering perfectionist out there. But that basically completes these two spreads. My next spreads are my goal and mood tracker. For my goals, I drew half, half, half-ish of a daisy and then wrote my goals inside of the petals to bring some color to this page. I decided to actually color in the petals beige. I don't know if a daisy if there is such thing as a daisy with beige petals, but I thought it looked really cute and I just used the marker to highlight these and can I just say that I'm really glad that I invested in the notebook that I currently have because it does not bleed when I color through with markers. This is not sponsored by Notebook Therapy, but thank you for having really great quality paper. For my goals, this month I really kind of narrowed it down obviously to the five that I'm going for but also in terms of my purpose. My big monthly purpose for April is an ode to one of my favorite bands called The Main and one of my favorite songs from them so I wrote the words make it to the other half of 23. A little ode to their song called Do You Remember the Other Half of 23 because I will only be 23 for another month. So, but for me, this line really means to embrace and celebrate the little things because as much as it sucks to kind of admit it, we won't have big celebrations and events for a while with everything that's going on. So we should celebrate these little moments of joy. I read this line once that said, You'll never learn to find happiness in a cup of tea or sunrise if you only save excitement for the big moments in your life, and I just want to celebrate these things, especially as I get older. Anyway, enough about that, let's move on to my mood tracker. This March was the first time I ever did a spread like this, and I actually really enjoyed it. And I think this is something, especially now, that will be good for me to look back on. I've mentioned it in previous videos of mine, but I do have some thyroid problems that I go to a doctor for, and I was recently taken off my meds while we figure out some things with my thyroid, and my doctor wants to monitor if I feel any symptoms of a thyroid imbalance. And one of the big indicators of a thyroid imbalance is mood swings, so this spread will not only be good for my mental health and checking in with myself, but also for my thyroid. I got inspo for this spread from Pinterest where I saw someone used a flower and flower petals to track their sleeping schedule, but for this I'm tracking my mood. The plan is that for every day I will draw a petal of the flower out of the ring to out to the ring that corresponds best with my mood. 
I have no idea how this turns out, but here's to hoping. I'm going to admit now that this next habit tracker spread is not the greatest spread that I've made and definitely leans more scrapbooky than daisy for sure. And afterwards when I was making all my spreads pretty and added a bunch of things, I think I just made it more chaotic. But as usual, I'm tracking my weekly and daily habits for the month of April here, the same format as always with my weeklies in a chart and my dailies in a calendar format. I had these leftover light yellow, pale yellow construction paper that I ripped out and added to the edges of the spread and it kind of reminds me of my October habit tracker when I did the book theme and did something similar with some um, printed paper. My habits are pretty standard every month, but a new one I'm adding this month is to wear sunscreen every day because I don't always wear it even though I should. I know that you should be wearing it even though you're indoors, but sometimes I don't and I really should be doing this especially because I use vitamin C products at night to help with like some dark spots on my skin. I say this every time I do a tracker spread but only track one what's important to you and once again if you find something that works for you there is no shame in sticking with it. I also am potentially thinking of doing kind of a vlog style of how I do my monthly preps and my monthly habits just because you see on a monthly basis what my monthly and my daily habits are but there are a few things that I do every single month to kind of prepare for the new month. I basically treat every end of the month as like a mini new year and a fresh start so I thought it might be interesting to do a video on that but I don't know if you are interested in a video like that then please let me know in the comments down below. For my April monthly challenge I thought it would be really fun to really really push myself out of my comfort zone and do a drawing well a doodle challenge i am not a drawer or artist of any sort fun fact in the eighth grade for an easter assignment my teacher wasn't sure if i drew jesus or a bird and i think that explains my drawing skills but but i want to get better at drawing and doodling so i thought it would be fun to try and hopefully improve on the skill this month Part of my work outside of making videos is graphic design and most people think that because I do graphic design I can draw. That is not the case. Um, I really can't. But to tie into the theme, I took the scraps of the black construction paper I used for the title, pasted that into the corner, and then added the daisy washi tape to the printout that I found on Pinterest. and. This looks very similar to all of my monthly challenges because I basically pasted them in, but once again, if you find something, stick with it. And if you have any suggestions for a monthly challenge that I should do, please once again leave them in the comments below. I have really liked to keep it simple for my monthly reflections because that leaves me with a lot of white space to write out my thoughts for the month. And that's what I did for this time around as well. I just drew some daisies popping out of the corner and then wrote April Reflections in all caps off to the side. If you have never done a monthly reflection before, I highly recommend doing so as you learn a lot and get to reflect on your goals and the progress that you've made in a month, but it's also really fun to read afterwards. Reading some of my reflections from 2020 has been really interesting and makes me remember what my mindset was at the time, but even reading the ones that I did at the beginning of this year kind of helps put things into perspective and kind of just shows you how far you can grow. 
The last spread we're working on is my partial weekly spread. I basically crammed all of March into my last weekly spread, which means I only had to fit four days onto this spread, so I got the chance to do some really big art quote unquote pieces as the focus of the spread instead of the functionality portion. So I drew half a daisy at the top and then some daisies in the corner and in the middle section. The center of the daisy, the, the pollenist part basically, I don't know what the, if that is actually a word, but that is where I'm going to be planning out each of my days. And I'll probably put some little memos or notes, or I think it'd actually be cute to put my steps or HOTDs in some of the petals that are sticking out. I don't know, I haven't made my mind up about that just yet. I guess it really depends on spacing. I have never done a spread like this before, as a lot of my spreads focus on functionality and are boxed up, so it's nice to switch it up this time. and make fun the forefront of this spread instead of usefulness. Don't get me wrong, I love my boxes, but I think this is going to be something that will look really nice once it's complete. But that basically completes the setup for now. As usual, you will see all the pages pretty and jazzed up through the flip through. And as I was jazzing this up, I also found these daisy stickers that I forgot that I had. So you'll definitely see a lot of those sprinkled throughout the spreads. And I guess it's easier to show you in per well, not in person, virtually, than to just talk about it. So let's cue the flip through for my April. Plan with me. And that completes today's video. I just want to say thank you so much again for watching my April Plan With Me. I think I say this at the end of every Plan With Me, but I think this is one of my favorite themes just because of how close the theme is to me. Um, and I just really like how it all turned out. Once again, thank you so much for supporting this channel. It would mean the world to me if you hit that thumbs up button or decided to subscribe. But as always, I hope that you are doing well, staying safe, and staying healthy. I love you to the moon and back, and I will see you in my next one. Take care always. Jay.